when I was learning how to throw further, I would spend a lot of time on online forums. So there was some Facebook groups and also a Reddit subreddit with threads where you could post videos of your form throwing and people would give you feedback on your form. And sometimes that would be kind of helpful. A lot of times, you know, it'd just be whoever would respond. You wouldn't get the best feedback. But I do tend to still spend a decent amount of time on these forums every once in a while just to check in, see what people are looking for tips on, drop some tips if I see them. And so I've spent a bunch of time just seeing a ton of people throw backhand in slow motion with all different types of form. And I've picked up on like a lot of the small mistakes or big mistakes that people can make with their backhand form. And in particular, I think the ones that people have the most trouble with is when you're around 350 max distance, you're trying to get to that 400, and there's just those little things that you can't quite figure out. So I wanna give a couple of things that I think are the biggest mistakes people make with their backhand form, especially in that 350 to 400 range when you're trying to just get that last bit of distance out that you can get. First one is actually the biggest one that I noticed the most, and I would say it is probably one of the biggest things that holds a lot of people back from getting that little bit of extra distance, especially finally reaching 400 feet, and that is having your body be way too rigid, way too stiff. If you watch any pro throw big distance, it's very rare that they're like really stiff and, and everything that they do is super rigid. If you watch the, the furthest throwers, Eagle's a great example. He has a super slow, mellow run up, but he just accelerates really fast and gets a ton of power in those last few seconds. Something I think you should think about is if you're sitting here like this and you're getting ready to throw, if you feel like there's any tension in your forearm, in your bicep, in your shoulder, like any tension at all, you know, aside from holding the disc, it's too much. Right now, I feel like I'm super tense right now and I would not be able to throw the disc very well. Now, if I relax, see how my elbow drops a little bit, my shoulder drops a little bit? That's kind of more where you wanna be. You wanna be a little bit more relaxed. It's not like this, right? but it's just a little more relaxed. You're holding onto it, but you're not gripping the disc super tight, keeping your forearm here, like all of this. Just, just relax a little bit, have a nice relaxed form. I notice a lot of the times when I'm not quite getting the distance I want to, usually I'm kind of a little bit tense. So I'm, you know, I'm trying to throw a big distance shot. I'm gonna do my little practice swing, nice and smooth. And then when I throw it, it's the exact same thing. Nice and mellow. That was an undertaker that I turned over, but still, you get the point. All right, number two is everything regarding the reach back. The three main things I see people messing up with the reach back are, one, reaching back too fast. You kind of want to just let your step allow you to reach back, and then when you get there, you want to accelerate really fast. You don't have to accelerate your reach back really quickly. It's just going to make everything really rigid and, and awkward. It's going to kind of be a bit with the last step is just being too rigid. Just easy, get there, and then accelerate forward. Number two is not getting a full reach back. Now, there are some people who throw really far and don't reach back all the way, like Calvin, but his form is totally different and I wouldn't recommend modeling your form after his. Generally, you wanna get a full reach back where your arm is totally extended on those max distance shots. And again, nice and loose on your reach back. You don't wanna be tense like this. You wanna allow it to fully reach back. That full reach back allows you to accelerate all the way through, get more distance on your acceleration. The last thing is rounding. You don't want to reach back where the line from the disc to your release point is through your chest. So if I'm throwing this way, I want my reach back to be here so that I can go follow through like that. That's the path of the disc. I don't want to reach back here because that's going to bring the disc through my chest essentially or get way too close. So you want your reach back to be out this way so you can pull forward in a straight line without having to round. Number three is really just leaning in any direction. There are some caveats to this, right? If you're trying to throw a roller, you're probably gonna lean back a little bit. If you're throwing a big hyzer, you might lean forward a little bit to get that big hyzer. But if we're just talking a normal distance shot, what I'll see a lot of people do, and it's not really the forward and back leaning that you see as much, that is one thing, but it's just kind of like left to right leaning, which is kind of forward and back depending on how you think about it. But some people, I'll see them go to throw and they'll kind of lean back really hard like that. And you could just see how awkward that was for me to lean back like that. It comes out on a ton of highs or you throw it way too high. Same thing if you want to put a lot of power into your shot, you might see someone, you know, go up 
lean forward way too much. Obviously, I'm over-exaggerating big time on these, but you can see how both ends of the spectrum there is, is just too much. When you're throwing, you want to stay upright. You want to rotate. You don't want to lean. Rotate your body and let that rotation pull you forward. If you want to have a good athletic stance, you're going to be stood upright. You're going to have both your feet planted on the ground, and you don't want to be leaning in either direction because it's going to throw off not only your balance, but your release point. So a nice controlled distance shot comes with good balance, not leaning, just rotate your body. So just upright the whole time, and it just flies straight nice and far. Another one that I've seen a few people do, this one isn't as common, but I think it could be a big contributor to a lot of issues when it comes to the backhand form. And this is something that I used to do a little bit sometimes too, so I definitely understand where you can come from. So a lot of people like to talk about the left arm and how you can generate power with your left arm. And generally what you wanna do is as you're coming through, reach into your pocket basically, into your left pocket to create not as much of an inertial object out here, essentially. You want to be able to rotate quicker. So bringing this into your body, if you think about spinning on a chair, you put your arms out, you spin slow, you bring your arms in, you spin fast. Keep your left arm close to your body so that when you're rotating here, it's just a little bit faster and it generates a bit more power. However, what some people will do is when they're throwing their backhand, they'll reach back and their left arm will come across here and they'll try to rotate like this. But I want you to think about this and I want you to try this as well at home. When you're reaching back, take your left arm and put it over here. You can feel the tension on your back. You can feel the tension in your pecs. Just your whole upper body is really tense and compact and you don't have a lot of movement that you can do and you can't really get quite a good reach back and you're making everything super awkward. Yes, you're getting that extra rotational speed maybe from, from doing that, but by reaching across with your left hand this way and then pulling it that way, you're making everything super tense and going big time against rule number one, which is to stay loose and controlled. You're, you're giving up a ton of control and you're not really getting that much extra. So what you wanna do instead is have your arm pretty much stay off to your side like this, your left arm. When you reach back, your arm's gonna kinda rotate with your body and then when you pull through, it's gonna come behind you and then follow through with you. You don't wanna be offsetting that arm with where you're going. It's gonna ruin your release point, it's gonna ruin your timing, and it's gonna make everything super tense. You're not gonna be able to throw quite as far. So again, I'm just gonna throw a quick shot and I'll show you what I'm doing with my left arm to make sure everything is good timing and I'm nice and smooth and relaxed. So it's going forward, arm comes back, comes forward. There you go, easy distance right there. It's all in concert together, don't be reaching across like this, super awkward. Number five, this one is super common, especially for people who are like throwing 300, maybe not 350, but more close to 300. The X step and your footwork are really important when you're throwing, but I think a lot of people can just think, oh, okay, I just do a little X step and then throw. Yes, but you want the timing to be good, you want your balance to be good, all these things are really important. You wanna shift your weight properly, you want to make sure the distance in your steps is proper, but really the biggest thing I think that you should think of with all of this is you want it to be smooth and controlled and upright and relaxed. I think a lot of people just do the X step because they think that that's what they're supposed to do and maybe it helps with timing a little bit, but in terms of power, when a lot of people are doing their X step, they're not really getting anything from it. So how many times have you seen someone do their X step and it's kind of just like, like that. Am I really getting any power out of my X step by doing that? I'm, I'm kind of doing this little hop and then I'm stopping and then I'm reaching back and I'm throwing. Your X step, your footwork should be a leading moment and it should, as soon as you step, be able to transfer all of that momentum forward. You don't want to do this little hop and then throw. You want to do a nice, smooth, if you can't do it properly, just literally walk, like literally just go you don't wanna be bobbing up and down. You wanna be as smooth as possible and you wanna transfer all that weight. Some people do a little bit of a hop where they go like this and that's, Jesus Christ. Some people do a little bit of a hop where they go like this. I think Calvin Heinberg does that and Aaron Gossage. So that's one way you can do it. I typically think just a nice slow, everything's super smooth. It's easy to have your timing be really precise that way you'll be able to throw super far with a lot less effort. So again, let's look at my X step here. 
and how it's nice and smooth and it just, right when I make that step, I'm pulling through and I'm not trying to overcomplicate things. I'm not trying to run super fast, be really bouncy or like get a ton of power by running in a weird way or stepping super far. Just a nice, smooth, relaxed X step and then just shift your weight as you're pulling through on the disc. That honestly wasn't even that great of a throw, but I think you get my point. Just slow, relaxed, smooth. Kind of a pretty common theme at this point. All right, and the last big mistake I see people make, and this is also something that I had a lot of trouble with at one point, and it's having no follow through. You want to make sure your whole body is following through when you throw the disc. Once the disc comes out of your hand, there's still things you want to think about. You don't want to think as soon as the disc is out of my hand, I can do whatever I want. You want to think after you throw because you're going to be doing things up until you throw that are going to be a result of what you're doing after. So if you don't follow through, you're going to slow down a little bit. Your release is going to be off. You want to make sure everything is following through because all that power has to come through. And then after it's out, you want to naturally kind of be allowing your body to continue that momentum forward. Otherwise you have to like stop a little bit before you throw. So I'll show you what a throw looks like with no follow through. I'll kind of leave my foot behind and I won't rotate all the way. Now, if you looked at that closely, you can kind of see how the rotation of my body kind of had to stop because I'm pulling away from myself, but I'm not letting myself follow through. And that's going to turn into not as good of a throw. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm just going to follow through, allow my body to come through and release. So just making sure my back foot, everything comes forward. Now that went way further, was way smoother, much better throw. Yeah, so those are just my six different things that I think a lot of people make mistakes on when learning how to throw far. Try to keep these in mind when you're throwing. I think a lot, a lot of people make these mistakes and they can be pretty minor. A lot of the examples I gave when demonstrating those mistakes could be pretty exaggerated, but just take videos of yourself. Try to pay attention to these things. If you can get all of these out of your form entirely, I guarantee you'll be throwing further if you were using them already. Don't forget to use code Tyler at otbdisc.com for 10% off any purchase. Uh, stick around for some more videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.